yeah uh, thank you dr seema for your kind introduction and uh, just today uh, i have uh, completed 100 of my publications with the publication in lung india of the covid uh, at the outset i also thank dr rajiv chavla shalini for putting me uh, in this very prestigious scientific uh, conference uh, thank you dr rajiv and dr. shalini for uh, putting me in, into this uh, i want to talk about a very very different type of topic uh, very least talked in the conferences and also a very neglected topic into day to day practice when the patient comes to us anemia we don't take it seriously so i think let uh, us discuss something about the relationship between anemia and diabetes uh, these are my disclosures let me put on the first at the outset anemia is one of the commonest and prevalent blood related disorder occurring in patient with diabetes we never think of that earlier and mostly occurs especially when the patients are already having the renal impairment or renal compromised patients most of the evidence indicate that the existence of anemia among type 2 diabetes is especially associated when kidney is failing failing and in that uh, situation the appropriate erythropoietin is deficient uh, we know this fact very well that anemia can adversely affect the health of the patient the quality of life of the patient is actually suffer suffering when the patient is suffering from anemia it has a major impact on the sense of well being quality of life suffers a lot as well as impairing their ability to work and affecting their social and sexual lives also it is a, a common and often neglected into day to day practice and it is most of the time untreated complications of diabetes which may have a negative consequence on the development and progression of other diabetes related micro and macrovascular complication i'll give you few evidences for that the risk of occurring anemia among diabetes patient with kidney disease is known it is high and it occurs early in those patients with the same level of renal impairment with other uh, etiologies of course there are several uh, causes for that but uh, for that matter diabetic neuropathy chronic inflammatory activity increased levels of advanced glycated end products age erythropoietin hyporesponsiveness not only the production of erythropoietin is reduced but the, there is a hyporesponsiveness in diabetes patients effects of oxidative stress and anti diabetic medications are also important uh, players which can cause anemia and diabetes uh, of course nutritional deficiency is very common especially in our indian uh, population indian females they are very very common in the, and especially in diabetic patients which may or may not be caused by diabetes but it can also result in anemia of course there are some medications like ace inhibitors fibrates metformin and thiazolidine dyons uh dr uh, uh, panikar is here but uh, we must agree on this particular aspect that these diabetes patients i mean these are the also the drugs may result into the anemia in diabetes patients however if you see what <coughs> the the microvascular damage can reduce uh, rats is survival chronic hypoxia in diabetes may lead to hematemic deficiency oxidative stress leads to reduce iron availability local inflammation leads to systemic inflammation autonomic neuropathy leads to occult blood loss which we never know uh, earlier increased salt reabsorption can i mean in the celiac diseases hyperfiltration in the kidney leads to drug maybe because of uh, other contributors like drug therapies urinary erythropoietin loss i mean there is a redu reduce renal production in erythropoietin and several other contributors are there which may lead to uh, the anemia and diabetes uh, we know that if patient is having both chronic kidney disease and any uh, diabetes of course anemia is a very very common feature and if you see the third anens uh, survey 
which found that people in general population with diabetes were nearly twice as uh, likely to have anemia as people without diabetes. So results from several studies have shown in uh, diabetic clinics especially, the prevalence of unrecognized anemia is nearly two to three folds greater than in the general population. And uh, in addition, uh, these diabetic patients tend to develop anemia at early ages. That is very important and with greater severity than the general population. Now, what is the real pathophysiology? If we come into the molecular level, EPO, erythropoietin, released by renal cells has been shown to be modulated by kidney splanking innervation. Indeed, the renal denervation in animal models have led to loss of EPO production in response to hypoxic stimuli. So this may be one of the mechanism by which the not only the production of EPO is reduced, but hyporesponsiveness is also there. Furthermore, EPO deficiency has recently been observed in anemic type 1 diabetes patients with severely symptomatic diabetic autonomic neuropathy. Of course, in one of the study, Bosman's study, which involves a small cohort of patients, of course, the serum EPO levels in anemic, anemic diabetic patients were found to be inappropriately low compared to the values observed in a control group. So, there is a reduced number of erythropoietin synthesizing interstitial cells and impairment of the regular process enabling the oxygen sensing through the hypoxic inducible transcription factor HIF1 alpha, which is secondary to interstitial fibrosis or vascular lesions are the main factors involved in the anemia. So these are the two important mechanisms by which the EPO reduces and not only the cells which produces the EPO also actually are involved through the HIF1 alpha. Uh, of course, there are several other mechanisms involving cytokine induced EPO th synthesis inhibition, hyporeninemia, urinary loss of EPO has also been seen in some of the nephritic patients and glycated, uh, glycation of the EPO receptors by the uh, or secondary to hyperglycemia. Dear friends, I need not to, I mean, give the, all the details, what are the consequences of anemia. And if you have diabetes and anemia, particularly these consequences increases to a, a, a greater level. They like reduce oxygen delivery to tissues, decrease HbA1c compensated by increased cardiac, uh, increased cardiac output, progressive cardiac damage and progressive renal damage may occur increased mortality risk. Of course, the quality of life of the patient suffers a lot. They uh, almost on a daily basis, they have fatigue, diminished exercise capacity and re reduced cognitive function. And of course, left ventricular atrophy is also implicate when the patient is having anemia. So there are several complications when the anemia and diabetes patients and anemia is actually a very strong and independent indicator where the Thomas study which published and diabetologia in 2006 <clears throat> and this anemia may be may also be significant in determining the outcome of the heart failure and hypoxia induced organ damage dear friends please do not neglect anemia at any cost in your diabetes patients because not only this uh, quality of life but also several micro and microvascular complications including heart failure may uh, aggravate of course, there are several complications. Anemia, uh, the short uh, diabetic patients have shorter half life, uh, shorter lifespan when they have they are suffering from anemia. It may lead to mitogenic and fibrogenic effects on the kidney and the heart, uh, associated with the expression of growth factors, hormones, and vasoactive reagents. Anemia is also correlated with oxidative stress because erythrocytes represent a major antioxidant component of the blood. So let me, uh, I mean, say what is the target hemoglobin. Uh, most of the guidelines actually have shown that uh, the hemoglobin of a person should be definitely more than 12 uh, gram percent. That is the one of the thing, but uh, actually there is uh, no recommendation at, uh, as on now but revised European best practice guidelines uh, for the management of anemia says that 
the hemoglobin level should be more than 12 grams in any case. Of course, if you define anemia by WHO criteria, the hemoglobin should be always be more than 12.5 gram percent. So how we treat an, uh, uh, the, this anemia? Of course, there is no conclusive evidence of correcting anemia significantly anomalous clinical outcomes, but there are several studies I'll quote later. International guidelines allow the use of erythropoietin in the patients with CKD <coughs> and anemia. Of course, now this is a, a, a topic uh, whereby iron replacement therapy uh, decreases HbA1c in both diabetic and non-diabetic individuals. So, I mean, iron replacement therapy patient is having iron deficiency anemia. This is the pivotal uh, I mean, the, the, the treatment part. Of course, this implies that the iron states must be considered during the interpretation of HbA1c consider. Uh, concentration. Always when we see the anemia in diabetes, uh, HbA1c is always, uh, I mean, low in that case. Early diagnosis and treatment of ID in uh, diabetic patients can improve their glycemic control also. So there are a few small studies demonstrated that correction of anemia is associated with reduction in retinal exudates and macular edema. So whenever we see the retinopathy, I think iron replacement or hemoglobin concentration should be more than 12 gram percent. Uh, treatment with erythropoietin in diabetic patient with heart failure may also reduce the length of hospitalization. And not only that, it improves the, the, uh, the New York Heart Association functional class also. So, in experimental models of diabetes, treatment with erythropoietin has been shown to protect against the development of diabetic neuropathy also. So, dear friends, I'll, now my talk will not be completed when I'll not talk about the little bit of the erythropoiesis in the last. Erythropoietin ensures the maturation of progen, a very, very important thing. Uh, pro erythropoietin rescues the neocytes from the apoptosis. And of course, erythropoietin helps in sustaining RBC proliferation and differentiation. Just see here, the, RB, the erythroid marrow actually produces RBC, circulating RBC, carrying the oxygen through the kidney, erythropoietin again uh, 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 aggravates the erythropoid, erythroid marrow to produce more RBCs. And if you see here, these are the stem cell or progenitor cells, uh, and this is how the maturation uh, of erythropoietin takes place. So if you see only these two things, the non-anemic patients and the erythropoietin, if you see, whenever the patients get the hemoglo low hemoglobin, uh, oxygen carrying capacity reduces, peripheral hypoxia is there, the kidney comes to the rescue, increases the erythropoietin, increases precursor cells, erythropoids, uh, erythroblasts and reticulocytes, ultimately erythrocytes increases, hemoglobin increases and oxygen transport. This is how the, in the non-anemic patients. But what happens in the patients uh, which has a CKD? Now, because kidney doesn't produce uh, the most of the erythropoietin or reduces, hence, if you see in the case when the hemoglobin is reduced in the patients, all the similar kind which we have seen earlier in non-anemic patients. Uh, now, if you see the, the damage, the reduced erythropoietin ultimately when it is insufficient reduces the erythrocyte anemia is, is still is still there so the patient is continuously having anemia when the patient is having ckd so the important thing about whenever we are actually treating the patients with erythropoietin please replace the iron that is very important if erythropoietin is the vehicle that drives the erythropoiesis Iron is the fuel needed for production of new red blood cells. So this is my take home message that whenever we treat the patients with erythropoietin, iron should be there to, I mean, complete the RBC cycle. So to conclude my talk, dear friends, anemia is very common in diabetes patients, especially in Indian population. I see on an almost daily basis, not more than 10 or 11 gram percent of the hemoglobin, not only in the males, but uh, very common in females, uh, with decreased renal functions and frequently complications of diabetic nephropathy, especially when the patient is having compromised renal uh, uh, 
uh, pathology, the anemia is very, very common. Early diagnosis is the clue. Regular monitoring is required. Proper management with iron replacement and if it is needed, erythropoietin therapy is very, very essential for a diabetic patients to prevent the micro and macrovascular complications to, I mean, increase the quality of life of the patient. And in due course of time, even it actually uh, uh, reduces the heart failure chances or at least improves that thing. So thank you very much. Uh, the accurate measurement of blood sugar uh, monitoring, glycated hemoglobin progress and the progressive uh, of the progression of the complication of diabetes are highly influenced by the severity of anemia. Please treat or manage anemia in your diabetic patients. Therefore, routine screening and proper treatment of anemia and diabetic patients will improve their quality of life. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity.